Hi, I'm Derek Peterman. I'm here at Photon to tell you about the 1780 mode scan system, which measures M squared and other beam propagation par parameters simultaneously. Like traditional techniques, we measure M squared by creating a beam waste and then measuring the beam size at different locations along the beam waste. Unlike traditional techniques, we perform this analysis simultaneously on every single beam size measurement. How is this done? Well, today I'm going to show you using a standard EE laser to show how this process works. What I need to do is create a beam waste inside this box, which requires the right lens selection and also spacing between the mode scan system and the laser. We have an Excel spreadsheet calculator to help make this process straightforward. To use the Excel mode scan calculator to set up the test, we simply enter reasonable estimates of, of the laser under test. This Heaney laser operates at 633 nanometers wavelength. It has an exit diameter aperture of half a millimeter or 500 microns. The estimated divergence is 2 milliradians. And the M squared, since Heaney lasers are fairly diffractive limited, we're going to estimate it to be about 1.1. And start with the smallest focal length lens in the mode scan test kit, which is 200 millimeters. So I enter that into the calculator, and the calculator calculates an optimal laser lens distance of 890 millimeters, which corresponds to a mode scan laser distance of about 820 millimeters. There's another parameter of the calculator calculates called the software lens position, which here is 2.7 millimeters. I'll explain what that means later, but we have all the parameters now to set up the test. Now that we've used the 1780 mode scan calculator to set up our test, I've set it up here on the bench. I, I'm using turning mirrors, which I, and I don't need to use turning mirrors, but I'll show you a little bit later, it's very convenient to use them. Where the beam comes out from the laser, hits this turning mirror, hits another turning mirror, and then is directed into the 1780 mode scan system. So how far is that beam traveling? Well, I measure it with a little ruler here, and it's about 31 centimeters from the front of the laser to this mirror. The beam is separated with the, in this path about 17 centimeters. And from the final turning mirror to the mode scan is roughly 45 centimeters. So the beam is traveling over 900 millimeters. That's a little bit longer than the calculator told us to, but that's okay. Now that we have the system set up, we want to make sure the beam is at the same height all the way along the beam path. So I just use a ruler here, make sure it's at the same height, and make sure Next, we need to position the test lens inside the mode scan system. If you recall from the mode scan spreadsheet calculator, the software lens position was 2.7 millimeters. That's determined by this knob and scale. So we position that about here. For rough alignment, turn on the laser, and then use a turning mirror so the beam goes through the iris. Once the beam is going through the center of the iris, the next step that I find useful is to slowly rotate the 1780 unit so that the beams go into the center of the video window, like that. Then perform an auto range so that we set the correct exposure time for the CCD camera. After the auto range is done, we want to do a background subtraction using the calibration function. So I click on here, I block the beam, I hit calibrate, then OK. And it's important to do a background subtraction for each individual exposure time. Now I'm going to show you a few tricks to help you make the 1780 mode scan system more efficient for you. The first thing I'm going to show you is why I use turning mirrors to set the things up.
turning me has turned out to make it much easier to adjust the horizontal skew and the vertical skew of the beams. Look here. See how the beams are, are angling up sideways and they're outside the cells? That's easily corrected by using the turning mirror and this knob on the gimbal mount. See how the beams line up like much more straight this way? If the beams are too tightly compacted or spread out too, too far vertically, it's because there's misalignment in this orientation. And again, we can use the turning mirror and the knob of the gimbal mount to do fine adjustment to get every beam in the cell. Once we get all the beams lined up so there is one per cell, let's look at the beam waste caustic. Notice that there's about a three to one ratio between the beam at the waist and at the ends of the waste caustic. We want to use this ratio because it allows us to use the full dynamic range of this 12-bit CCD camera used in the 1780 mode scan system to measure the largest portion of the beam waste possible. If the ratio is much smaller than this, we are only measuring a very small portion of the beam waste. If the ratio is larger than this, the largest beams are measured using a very small percentage of the dynamic range of the camera, which can lead to inaccurate results. At this point, we have everything well aligned and we're ready to take data.